Welcome to Connecting Communities. I'm your host, Nancy Bocci. With me today is Lisa Robinson, Director of Shape Up Somerville. Hello, Lisa. Hi, Nancy. We are outside on this beautiful day outside of the Cross Street Senior Center, which serves as a site of the Somerville Mobile Farmers Market. Yes, very excited to be here. This is our second weekend for the season. Excellent. So before we jump into more of the details, I wanted to get a little bit of the history of the market. So please share. Sure. So the market started in the summer of 2011, and it started because the Star Market in Winter Hill um, closed a few years prior and really uh, created a little bit of a food access gap uh, for people in the neighborhood. And through a uh, survey, a food uh, access survey, um, through Tufts and ICH, we saw that you know people were having more challenges getting food mm -hmm. and also in speaking with uh, community members an idea came up actually from a teenager who said why not sell the way that I'm used to you know in the country that I was born where you know the markets come to us and it's an open-air market and so with that came the Somerville Mobile Farmers Market. That's interesting I didn't realize that the idea actually originated from a young person yeah. and I think it also serves to help uh, to highlight the cultural diversity in mm -hmm. Somerville I mean yeah. to realize you know we have kind of the standards and the ways of doing things and it's nice to shake that up sometimes, mm -hmm. but to realize there are many other ways to provide access to people to a variety of services. So this is really great. Yeah, yeah, it was great, and um, we were yeah. fortunate. Uh, actually, we got some seed funding from a few other, from a few foundations, uh, the Walmart Foundation and Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources, mm -hmm. also known as MDAR, has been really generous in uh, providing uh, funds to get the market going, as well as Project Bread oh, um, each year. And I know in, uh, since the inception of the market, the amount of sites have increased and locations have been added. Talk a little bit about how that's determined. Sure. So uh, we started off at one site, which was at uh, the Mystic uh, Housing Development mm -hmm. on Saturdays. Um, and just with time, we saw that, you know, got more popular and we want to expand, particularly that, you know, our mission was to be mobile and to increase food access uh, mm -hmm. for all residents in Somerville. So uh, they... A few years before, you know, a few years after the market started, uh, switched over, added a site to the North Street housing. Mm -hmm. And last year we were able to expand to four van sites, again through uh, MDAR funding and also uh, generous uh, city funds as well um, to support us. And we are now at the Council on Aging, we're at the East Somerville Community School, we're at North Street housing and Mystic housing on uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Excellent. What do you see is really the importance of having these variety of locations? Mm -hmm. Well, we really want to target or hit you know, as many people as possible mm -hmm. in Somerville. And so by increasing our uh, locations, we're able to um, hopefully increase the, you know, our reach for people. Um, and we're hoping that you know, our goal is to, have, to be within walking distance mm -hmm. uh, of people you know, passing by. And we have some other farmers markets in Somerville, so Davis Square and Union Square. Mm -hmm. And we found that our locations um, not only are trying to be where we're uh, serving people who are at risk for food insecurity, um, but also where it's not hitting sort of the walk shed of the Davis and the Union Square markets. Right. That's what actually really intrigued me about this location, you know, with the senior center population built in and again, identifying people who may be at risk of food insecurity and having it presented in a way that is very welcoming. You know, I mean, all of your staff are great and I know later on we're going to get a chance to chat with them briefly, uh, but really creating a very engaging, welcoming atmosphere. So, you know, it's fun to do. I mean, it's the display is set up very nicely. People have the opportunity to come out, have a little chit chat, pick up some really healthy items. Items. And you know, it's nice to be able to kind of put a face to a project as well. So seeing the same people on a regular basis, okay. I think encourages attendance. And then when someone, you know, buys a head of broccoli and makes this amazing salad or something with it and then shares that with a friend, mm -hmm. I think it really encourages others to take part. Yeah, definitely. And it's really just a nice opportunity to get out into the community, meet our neighbors, meet the community and get some feedback, particularly with, you know, our mission of Shape Up Somerville to be increasing um, you know, healthy opportunities for everybody. So this definitely sort of is a, a two-way communication mm -hmm. stream here. Excellent. And I know Groundwork Somerville features into this arrangement as well. Yes. So Groundwork Somerville has been a partner since the beginning of the market. Um, they, as many people probably know, are a nonprofit um, in the community who work with teens on environmental, uh, social justice issues, job training, mm -hmm. um, and one of their core programs is hiring the green team where they hire youth uh, throughout the year and they hire I think double the amount in the summertime mm -hmm. 
Um, and they have a farm over in Union Square called South Street Farm where they grow food. And what's so neat is that they're one of our, um, we buy from them. Mm -hmm. They're one of our farms, one of four farms that we buy from. And so the green team sees the food like throughout the whole food cycle. Right. They see it, you know, being planted, they see it being grown, they harvest it, um, they provide it to us to, you know, put into the van and then they come and help us sell at the market as well. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times they're bringing food home to their family and then cooking with it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really neat, they get to see it. And then when they're selling at the market, they can be answering questions to the customers about, mm -hmm. you know, the food that um, they've grown and, you know, any concerns or questions or just how to eat it or what it tastes like or how to cook with it so it's really great to see that I always enjoy in the summertime you see the green team staff out on their bicycles yep. wearing the shirt so again you know alternate forms of transportation and it, it's a program that I am always particularly glad to hear about uh, the city through a grant we received through youth work through the Metro North Regional Employment Board is actually able to fund some of the green team positions so we're already, you know, it's a great partnership and again, it's making certain that young people have access to opportunities yeah. and I think really raising the level of an empowerment and self-esteem that they feel because they're almost serving as an ambassador now for, for the program, yeah. as you said, to be able to talk about how the food was grown, what sort of things you can do with the food, you know, I think that's one of my favorite times as I try to stop by the farm once or twice throughout the summer and really, you know, the kids are just literally in it up to their elbows and they are just so excited to always, you know, stop what they're doing and talk to you about the program and mm -hmm. such enthusiasm to really share their experience. And, you know, Summer Bowl, as we know, is such a densely populated city that we really appreciate and kind of overawe sometimes our open spaces that we have available because yeah. they are, you know, a very slim resource. And the farm is a beautiful spot yeah. to go to. And they also, um, I had stopped by last year and saw them at the back of the Argenziano School mm -hmm. where they also have a garden plot as well as yeah. they do at some of the other elementary oh, schools. Oh, they have, a, yeah, they help uh, maintain all of the uh, school gardens. Mm -hmm. So that's really great service. It is really nice to see that part. And as you said, part of Shape Up's mission is to really ensure healthy options. You know, it, there are many components to come together to enjoying a healthy lifestyle. It's about making smart choices, having access to healthy options. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that we had talked a little bit about before was your 95210 campaign. Right. So that definitely has a tie into this. Can you share a little bit of the details about that? Sure, yeah. So the 95210, just a quick overview again, is nine hours of sleep um, on average five servings of fruits and vegetables, uh, two hours of screen time or recreational screen time or less, one hour of physical activity or more, and zero sugary drinks um, or uh, nicotine. So this we feel like is a great way to increase the five in mm -hmm. terms of the servings of fruits and vegetables. Um, you know, and a lot of times we hear people say, you know, I love fruits and vegetables, but they're so expensive these mm -hmm. days. Um, so again, the market, we're trying to price it, um, you know, affordable for everyone and we'll talk I'm sure I know we'll talk right. about a good feature of the market um, so it enables people to increase their fruit and vegetables seasonal fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. um, and then we'd like to think that many people are accessing us by walking or biking or taking the bus um, mm -hmm. so that we're also adding to their one hour physical activity during the day. That's excellent, really. Everything comes together. Mm -hmm. Now, do you often hear when you're working with customers at the market that they're seeing a fruit or vegetable for the first time? Something new? Because yeah. I know when I kind of scoped out some of the stuff, I was like, there's an item or two I'm not really familiar with. Yeah, um, definitely. There's, It's fun. It's sort of a nice balance to have the foods that people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. Um, and then hopefully someone's learning about a new food or just even if it's not new to them, maybe that it's presented in a different way. So like carrots with tops on them or like mm -hmm. beets with the leaves on them. Um, but what's really neat is that we try to source our um, some culturally relevant items. Mm -hmm. So again, thinking about the diversity of our um, residents in Somerville and making sure that we have foods here that everyone you know, likes and is familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, so we have something that was new to me is uh, callaloo, also yes. known as amaranth, which is a leafy green. So it's similar to like spinach or collards where you can chop them up, saute it. It's really, you know, rich in a lot of nutrients, um, but very popular in Caribbean, um, Haitian cuisine, as well as uh, Southeast Asian cuisine. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a very popular item as well as uh, lalu that is hard to um, grow up here, oh. but our one of our farmers, world farmers, um, is really nice and whatever they do grow they send our way oh, excellent. and it's a it's a great seller here and i think 
think again how nice that must be for newly arrived residents to the city, but, you know, if they're coming here from another country mm -hmm. and learning to adapt to uh, the excitement that is Somerville, but to have some things that are really are familiar and be able to replicate the cooking you had done in your home country here and continue those traditions with your children, I mm -hmm. think is very nice. Uh, you did touch upon very briefly one of the interesting components of the market, which I think is a huge uh, point of interest for all residents. Can you talk about the match component? Sure, yeah. So, again, one of the main missions with our market is to increase healthy food access uh, for all living in Somerville, particularly people who are at risk for food insecurity. Um, so what we do is we try to price it. We've done research you know, to make sure that our prices are comparable to other farmers market and other grocery stores, keeping in mind that most of what we sell is organic or very um, you know, low chemical use. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone who shops at the market and uses food assistance, so whether that's uh, seniors, farmers market coupons, WIC uh, farmers market coupons, if they use uh, WIC or SNAP, um, if they live at a public housing complex, particularly at North Street or Mystic, they get half off their total purchase. Um, and there's no limit to that. So they can shop all you know, 16 weeks of the market and get half off. Um, so we really are doubling people's uh, purchasing power, which is really exciting. Um, and we were just over actually at the WIC office last week because um, they were distributing the fruit and vegetable checks. Mm -hmm. This Monday, I think, is when they're going to be distributing the uh, seniors farmer market checks. Mm -hmm. um, but again, if you get $20 worth of those checks and you spend them at the market, you can actually buy $40 worth mm -hmm. of produce um, because of the 50% off discount. Excellent. Now, when thinking of the different sites that you have the market located at, what kind of differences do you see in the people who choose to utilize the market? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I see, I think, maybe like a whole range of diversity from different ages um, to different cultural backgrounds. Um, but I think what we often always see is always some kids at the market, so that's oh, really that's fun. fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to think, you know, that they're um, sort of learning, being exposed to this early on, and, you know, they're usually moms are you know coming and shop or grandmothers and going and you know shopping and buying the food and then preparing it for them and maybe some siblings at home um, so some differences and some similarities I think that really ties in with the fact you know when children are young your parents or guardians are always encouraged you know make them part of the process so Absolutely. it's one thing if a child in another room comes in here's your supper there, there's no interaction with that but you know if they're able to help choose the items prepare the items oh, yeah. maybe now you know look up a recipe as you said particularly with some of the items that might be newer to them I'm mm -hmm. sure there are really innovative ways to use these different items so I think it does become a more engaging process yeah, and what we also see is that people get really excited about fruit. You know, fruit's one of those things that, particularly at a mobile uh, farmer's market, is like candy, right? It's one of the things that is most to ready to eat. Yeah, yeah to ready. draw, and people get excited, and it's such like a fleeting time of season to be mm -hmm. eating these foods. So um, we know that that excites everybody. And corn, we know that... Uh, Everyone gets excited about berries and corns. <laughs> it is. Corn on the cob is probably one of my very favorite things ever. So it, it's Summertime. just right. It's just so seasonal. So mm -hmm. it definitely has that attraction to you. Yep. Now I know this year you've been able to increase staffing at the market. Yeah. Yes. So um, again, that was we um, had asked for a little more money to support uh, consistent staffing at the market. Mm -hmm. Um, because one of the things we really wanted to do was improve just our, you know, efficiency and our customer experience. And sometimes, you know, we sort of cobbled together some work so that um, we were able to get some funding from the city um, to staff a mobile market manager, an assistant, um, a market assistant, and a sales manager. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's great. They're, they've started with us in back in June and they'll be with us throughout the whole season. So there will be temporary and mm -hmm. hopefully return next year. Great. I had the opportunity to meet them when they came on board. They seemed yeah. very excited about that as well. And now kind of seeing them engage with uh, clients now at the market is very interesting. Yeah. So you had mentioned, um, you know, making sure the community knows about this, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. I know you guys are on Facebook and Twitter mm -hmm. and, you know, definitely ways to promote that. How do you feel you're able to effectively connect with the community and let them know about this amazing opportunity? Yeah, that was something that with staffing, actually, we've been able to spend more time. Erica, the program manager of the market, and myself have been able to spend more time on outreach. Mm -hmm. um, so, again, we were at the WIC office. Uh, Erica was on a radio show. Um, I think it was WB. And I'm forget forgetting, but two weekends ago we were listening to her on the radio. Um, what else have we done? We've sent a lot of flyers and little handbills um, out to our community partners to make sure that the, that word gets out that way. Um, 
and we'll continue to do some like door knocking and just mm -hmm. handing out of flyers as people walk by so they know about us. Right. I mean, again, it's a really great resource for the community. And I know attendance has increased as the market has gone on in years and really being very deliberate about the sighting of locations, realizing, you know, you want the passerby traffic, but sighting them at places that also have built in populations that would be interested in utilizing such a resource as well. Yeah. When you think of feedback that you've gotten from the community or people who've participated in the market, what sort of comments do they make? Mm -hmm. So oh, okay. pricing, just like making sure that our prices were really um, well um, displayed mm -hmm. and uh, again hearing about it so a lot of times people would be like oh you're right down the street from me I didn't know so again making sure we have oh one other thing is some uh, signs that are going to go up on uh, different posts around the area that oh, will excellent. stay up for the season so people know that we're there when oh, the great. van's not there um, what else did we get for you know if anyone thought that what was priced was a little too much we again uh, did some uh, market research yeah. to see, you know, oh, is this price a little too expensive mm -hmm. or is this comparable considering right. to, you know, that it's a local organic item. Right. Um, and one thing that we're really excited about is that we have grocery baskets this year. So before... Oh, I did see that. Yeah. There, yes. Before, you know, people would have to like juggle all their stuff <laughs> or like that dump it at the table. That could become a new hobby though. You could learn like tomato juggling, That's squash true. juggling. So yeah. you're getting some of your fitness time in there as well. Yeah, new skills. <laughs> but the baskets do seem like a definite uh, upgrade. But we're very excited about those, yeah. And I think our shoppers are too. Excellent. Now you had mentioned that the majority of the items here are organic or, you know, treated with very little chemicals. Yeah. Is that something that's been an initiative going forward or is that based mm -hmm. on kind of feedback from customers? That's, um, that's sort of both I would okay. say um, you know when we think about food justice and food access mm -hmm. you know that we know that you know that there's no difference in nutrients the way if something's grown um, conventionally with pesticides or with, you mm -hmm. know organic but we know it's better for the environment it's right. better for our bodies to have minimal chemicals on our food um, and that unfortunately organic is a bit more expensive mm -hmm. um, because it's a lot more labor intensive right. um, so to try to again improve access you know that everyone can be consuming mm -hmm. foods, healthy foods that are free right. of chemicals. So that sort of just kind of aligns with our mission and that is important and, you know, important value to the customers as well. I think that's important to note too. I think people now are so much more aware of health consequences from, you know, food choices, inactivity, all of those things. And I think when people are able to incorporate small changes into their lifestyle that are, you know, kind of quick and painless, right. you know, you really don't want someone to go from being completely sedentary to training for the marathon, right. you know, there are health concerns with that but I think if people are able to make incremental changes mm -hmm. I think that's really important so realizing too you know there is the option to have healthier food available to you yeah. exercise that option there are ways to get there you know utilizing public transportation or getting your exercise in again another chance to get out there and Learn a little bit about your community too, I think. Yeah. So for people who are interested in the logistics of the market, yeah. so days of the week and times where they're located. It's Fridays and Saturdays. So it's at the Council on Aging, Fridays from 10.30 to 12. Mm -hmm. mm, nope, take that back. It's from 11 to one. Mm -hmm. And then East Somerville Community School from 3.30 to 5.30. Saturdays, it's from North Street from uh, 10.30 to 12. Mm -hmm. And then at Mystic Housing from one to three. Excellent. So a variety of options. So if you're in one of those areas or if you're running an errand in one of those areas, you have multiple opportunities to utilize this. So yep. we're going to walk over in just a minute and take a peek at the offerings okay. there. But I really did want to thank you for coming on and sharing this information. Again, it's an amazing resource to have within our community. We're very fortunate because not all communities have this available so to them. Yep. So thank you for the work that you do with this program. Yeah, and thanks for allowing us to spread the word on the show. Excellent. Erica, you are very nicely going to help me do a little shopping here today. We are at the site on Holland Street outside of the Council on Aging. I do know there is one other site that wasn't mentioned earlier, though. Can you tell me about that one in partnership with Groundwork Somerville? Sure. So the green team from Groundwork Somerville work with us at all of our different sites, mm -hmm. uh, but they also run one of their own. So yes. at the Clarendon Towers on the western side of Somerville, they have this awesome bike setup mm -hmm. uh, with a trailer and a hitch and so they're able to take a selection of the produce yeah. out with them mm -hmm. 
uh, to the Clarendon Towers and meet a handful of customers over there and, and really try their hand at running their own small version of the market. So That's it's pretty excellent. exciting. What a growth opportunity for them, no pun intended. But, <laughs> you know, and really, again, the ability to engage with the community and get to a population that really can utilize this sort of service. Absolutely. So excellent to hear. So we're going to do a little shopping right, now. Go. Let's give that a go. If yeah. I may get you a basket here. Thank you. I'm very excited for the basket. All right. So I am looking to pick up a number of items and I'm okay. looking for your assistance in some of the selection. Sure. So I think I would like three tomatoes. All right. So how am I determining what makes a great tomato? Besides all of them I'm sure are wonderful. That's true. <laughs> and I think one of the things to actually focus on because when we go through at the grocery store, at the farmer's market, we can kind of squeeze all the tomatoes. Yeah. It's good for us to find out which ones are nice and firm, but yeah. not as good for everyone else who gets all the squishy tomatoes. Probably so not that good for the tomatoes. Yeah. True. So we'll just really lightly see if they're nice and firm. Okay. They have a nice, good tomato oh, smell let's see what to them. Like. Oh, very nice. Okay. And these are coming from Oakdale Farm down in Rehoboth. So Excellent. Everything's coming from within Massachusetts. All right. um, I'm also looking for some broccoli. All right. Nice choices. One head of that. Uh, you can pick your size. We have everything from. I would uh, like a medium size. I don't. That's too little, <laughs> and that is about something right. Something I think. This yeah, one I think looks that good. Will be good. Yeah. All right. Let's do that. Okay. I was interested in some of these as well, but how are we oh, packaging nice. those? Well, we'll do that by the pound. So I'll grab you a okay, bag so right there here. There is a little bag. Okay. Okay. So I think my dad would really be interested in some green beans. They're one right. of his favorite things. So a, a good amount of that. He does eat mostly vegetables. So. All right. And, and some of these handful. were actually grown from Groundwork Somerville oh, in raised excellent. beds. So these Wonderful. we'll start with. And we also have for the slightly more adventurous some dragon's tongue beans. I uh, know. Thank you. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Vaguely fuzzy, sound, but the same do taste. Those different. Um, True. But yeah. So maybe one more good handful of those. Let me see how we're looking. I think that would be great for Dad. All right, and we can weigh you as well to check in <laughs> on that. Excellent. Um, I need two peaches. Oh, yeah. Now, peaches, I will say, are a fruit that I don't particularly eat myself, so I'm always a little hesitant about picking them out. Mm -hmm. So, again, what am I looking for when I'm picking a really ripe peach? I think kind of the same principle as the tomato. You know, you mm -hmm. want something that's firm, not too, like, mushy. It's on its edge, but you also can check and see if it needs a little time to ripe it up and I mean these especially you can smell oh, that so smells amazing. Wonderful. Very nice. It's usually when we take them out of the truck it just <laughs> like radiates to the market. That and the cilantro we get the most mm -hmm. smells from. So. Excellent and I know we're gonna head over here. I did want um, two of the summer squash. All right. Do you have a preference on size or weight? Um, I think that's good. Probably okay. two in that size range would be great. And these are so fresh that some of them still have the uh, the left of the blossom oh, left excellent. on it. Well, that's how you know you're getting something really <laughs> in good shape. That's true. I'm going so to have one here. of the smaller zucchinis, not that giant one. Not the club. <laughs> this was grown at Groundwork, too. Oh, All that's of the ones awesome. that come out of Groundwork are enormous. That, that's like a weapon. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Two, did you say? Uh, I'll take two. Two. That's right, fine. And then I do need one cucumber. One cucumber. And then this will be the end of my purchases here. That one. Yep. No, I was kind of looking at that one. Yeah, I am this one. This is a nice one. So it does look it fresh kind of, out. Yeah, looks pretty great. Mm -hmm. So thank you for helping me select the items. Absolutely. And we did want to say hello to the other market staff as well. Who this are is out where you'll here check out. Helping <laughs> yeah. to do this. Okay, so now I'm going to pay for my items, which will be great. Mm -hmm. My purse. So can I ask you a question? Two squash. Two peaches, <laughs> green beans, and then ending with my head of broccoli. Thank you. Thank you. All right. This is very handy. Everything is nice uh, and self-contained, and nice to me, you need me to sign. Yeah. You can just put the receipt in the bag, Tausar. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you for